I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So in my last video, we read the first half of 2 Nephi chapter 1. Lehi gives his prophecy about the Americas, how there will be a land of liberty as long as the people living here obey God, as long as we follow the commandments of God. He then talked about, he then called his sons to repentance and talked about how he was soon to die. Now we pick this up in verse 16, and we will finish out the chapter. And I desire that ye should remember to observe the statutes and the judgments of the Lord. Behold, this hath been the anxiety of my soul from the beginning. My heart hath been weighed down with sorrow from time to time, for I have feared, lest for the hardness of your hearts the Lord your God should come out in the fullness of his wrath upon you, that ye be cut off and destroyed forever. Or that a cursing should come upon you for the space of many generations, and ye are visited by sword and by famine, and are hated and are led according to the will and captivity of the devil. O oh, my sons, that these things might not come upon you, but that ye might be a choice and a favored people of the Lord. But behold, his will be done, for his ways are righteousness forever. And he hath said that inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from my presence. And now, that my soul might have joy in you, and that my heart might leave this world with gladness because of you, that I might not be brought down with grief and sorrow to the grave. Arise from the dust, my sons, and be men, and be determined in one mind and in one heart, united in all things, that ye may not come down into captivity, that ye may not be cursed with a sore cursing, and also that ye may not incur the displeasure of a just God upon you, unto the destruction, yea, the eternal destruction of both soul and body. Awake, my sons, put on the armor of righteousness, Shake off the chains with which ye are bound, and come forth out of obscurity, and arise from the dust. Rebel no more against your brother, whose views have been glorious, and who hath kept the commandments from the time that we left Jerusalem, and who hath been an instrument in the hands of God in bringing us forth into the land of promise. For were it not for him, we must have perished with hunger in the wilderness. Nevertheless, ye sought to take away his life. Yea, and he hath suffered much sorrow because of you. And I exceedingly fear and tremble because of you, lest he shall suffer again. For behold, ye have accused him that he sought power and authority over you. But I know that he hath not sought for power nor authority over you, but he hath sought the glory of God and your own eternal welfare. And ye have murmured because he hath been plain unto you. Ye say that he hath used sharpness. Ye say that he hath been angry with you. But behold, his sharpness was the sharpness of the power of the word of God which was in him. And that which ye call anger was the truth, according to that which is in God, which ye could not restrain, manifesting boldly concerning your iniquities. And it must needs be that the power of God must be with him, even unto his commanding you that ye must obey. But behold, it was not he, but it was the Spirit of the Lord which was in him, which opened his mouth to utterance, that he could not shut it. And now my son Laman, and also Lemuel, and Sam, and also my sons, who are the sons of Ishmael, Behold, if ye will hearken unto the voice of Nephi, ye shall not perish. And if ye will hearken unto him, I leave unto you a blessing, yea, even my first blessing. But if ye will not hearken unto him, I take away my first blessing, yea, even my blessing, and it shall rest upon him. And now, Zoram, I speak unto you. Behold, thou art the servant of Laban. Nevertheless, thou hast been brought out of the land of Jerusalem. And I know that thou art a true friend unto my son Nephi forever. Wherefore, because thou hast been faithful, thy seed shall be blessed with his seed, that they dwell in prosperity long upon the face of this land. And nothing save it shall be iniquity among them shall harm or disturb their prosperity upon the face of this land forever. Wherefore, if ye shall keep the commandments of the Lord, the Lord hath consecrated this land for the security of thy seed with the seed of my son. So this is Lehi calling his sons to repent. He's speaking specifically to Laman and Lemuel. It is interesting that he does include Sam in this. Sam is not Sam has never rebelled as far as we have any record of, but he is still being included in this because he is the the statement there. This is a very interesting statement that 
if they will follow Nephi. Nephi, in other, Lehi is making Nephi the high priest of the group. He's not making him king. He's not making him the political ruler. He's making him the religious leader. And he's telling him, you follow him and you will have the birthright. This would indicate to me that Sam gained the birthright. Laman and Lemuel both rebelled, which means the birthright was taken from them, but Sam did not. And so I think Sam actually got the birthright. He was, and this is likely, in my opinion, that the first kings were likely chosen from the line of Sam. That his line became the first kings, because they had the birthright. Now it is also interesting that he includes the sons of Ishmael. He says, and also my sons who are the sons of Ishmael. This actually would indicate to me that the theory, my mother's theory, that the sons of Ishmael had married the daughters of Lehi, this actually makes that sound a little more plausible. Because why would he call them his sons if they did not marry his daughters? In other words, they're his sons-in-law. See, if he was just saying, oh, they're my sons because we're all part of the same group, then why doesn't he call Zoram his son? He speaks to Zoram separately. And now you could also, it is possible that he calls them his sons because their sisters married his sons. It's possible that that familial connection is what he's referring to. But it does at least give some indication that the idea that they married his daughters was, is true. But that, and at least a, a strong hint of the possibility of it. I find that fun too. I'm going to leave that one here and we'll pick this up in chapter 2.